This episode of Marijuana Today Daily is brought to you by the Emerald Conference, which kicks off this Thursday, February 15th in beautiful San Diego, California, running through the following day, Friday, February 16th. The Emerald Conference explores the science and technology of legal cannabis like no other event on this year's calendar. Find your way to San Diego this week and pack your brain full of good information and your address book full of relevant industry contacts. Save $50 off the already affordable cost of attending by using the discount code MJTODAY50-2018 over at TheEmeraldConference.com. That's discount code MJTODAY50-2018, all mashed together one word, over at TheEmeraldConference.com. Good morning, Marijuana Nation. It's Tuesday, February 13th, 2018, and you're tuned in to episode 430 of Marijuana Today Daily. I'm your host, Shay Gunther, and I'll be walking you through today's marijuana news and headlines. As always, we have a full and busy day of cannabis news in our hands, so let's jump right into it. Our top story of the day is the news that U.S. Attorney General Jeff Sessions is not happy about having nominees to Department of Justice posts blocked by Colorado Republican Senator Cory Gardner, who has been exercising one of his senatorial powers against the DOJ ever since the rescinding of the Cole Memo, which provided a measure of protection for state legal marijuana. In a speech given yesterday to the National Sheriff's Association, Sessions expressed his frustration with the holdups in the Senate saying, quote, right now we're trying to confirm a number of important component heads at the Department of Justice. That includes a new head of our criminal division, our civil rights division and our national securities division. These are critically important components and outstanding nominees. Our nominees to lead the National Security Division was approved unanimously in committee, but because of one senator's concerns over unrelated political issues, like legalizing marijuana, we can't even get a vote. Unquote. Tom Angel over Marijuana Moments has our second top story of the day, which exists in the same realm as our first, with President Trump proposing the gutting of the budget for the White House Office of National Drug Control Policy, or ONDCP, the office that our nation's drug czar leads up. In the disaster of a budget released by the Trump administration yesterday, the ONDCP's funding is slashed by more than 90 percent, falling to just under $30 million from $385 million this year. As Tom's reporting, a few of the agency's initiatives would be transferred to other parts of the government, such as the controversial high-intensity drug trafficking area program to be shifted to the Department of Justice. Tom's piece has a lot of good background and detail, so I'd click over for the actual read. And also remember that it's the U.S. Congress that actually sets the budget for the United States, whereas presidential budgets are more like wish lists for their party to tack towards. Rounding out our top three stories is a good piece over in Leafly by Dennis Romero about the mess that is the current Los Angeles cannabis market. As Dennis has it, licensed shops in L.A. who are following state rules and paying all necessary taxes are complaining about being overrun by illegally run dispensaries and delivery services that are undercutting them in price because they're dodging tax responsibilities. L.A. is one of California's larger markets and California is the largest state in the U.S., so this is a good story to have a full handle on. As always, we have all the news we cover linked to on our website at mjtodaydaily.com and on our Twitter account at MJ Today Daily. Those are our top stories for today. It's time for Marijuana Today Daily Headlines Blitz. Before we blitz out on headlines, let's quickly thank our sponsor, the Emerald Conference, the top gathering of legal cannabis science and technology minds on the calendar. There aren't many businesses in legal marijuana that wouldn't be improved by having a better handle on the science and technology driving the industry. So if you can make your way to San Diego, California this Thursday and Friday, you need to get to the Emerald Conference. Save $50 off the already affordable cost of registering by opening up TheEmeraldConference.com and using the discount code MJTODAY50-2018, all smushed together with no spaces. That's discount code MJTODAY50-2018 over at TheEmeraldConference.com. Hurry, though, as there are only a couple days until the big event kicks off, but it's not too late if you act fast. All right, time for the Blitz. 
Last week, the Canadian Securities Administrators, or CSA, released updated requirements for Canadian medical marijuana companies with holdings in the United States. The new rules have stricter guidelines than before for the disclosure of any U.S. operations by licensed Canadian medical marijuana firms, but should provide a solid framework for those companies to operate south of the border. Swing over to Marijuana Business Daily for more on this one, as well as a good bullet-pointed list of the new disclosure requirements. Mary Jane took a good comprehensive look at how things have been going in California in their first month of legal adult use sales. As we also touched upon with one of our top stories, it's a complicated and muddled picture, but not unexpected in the early days of a big, dynamic, messy market and conversion from being illicit and semi-illicit to fully legal. This is yet another good story to dive into fully, even if you're not directly involved in the California market. Marijuana Business Daily's Chart of the Week examines the number of financial institutions in the U.S. who do any kind of business with the legal marijuana industry. As of September of last year, there were 400 listed depository institutions with active marijuana business clients. Their chart shows a slow but steady increase in the number of banks willing to work with legal cannabis, though it does only extend to September, so it doesn't reflect recent anxieties over the rescinding of the Cole Memo. Even so, it's an instructive read. Canada's Toronto Star has a good article looking at an issue that will pop up in every jurisdiction that allows for more progressive marijuana laws, and that's the rules around home cultivation and how landlords can limit their tenants from growing and consuming cannabis in rented spaces. In short, there's a lot of lobbying going on at the federal and provincial level right now in Canada to bake into law some protections for the landlord class. Another informational story to read. Yesterday in Albuquerque, New Mexico, activists rallied around the call to add opioid addiction to the list of medical marijuana qualifying conditions. Under current New Mexico law, the Secretary of Health has final authority over new additions to that list, and current Secretary Lynn Gallagher has been resistant to past efforts to add people with opioid addiction, or opioid use disorder as it's officially called, to the ranks of registered patients. One of the other reasons activists gathered yesterday is to promote two proposed bills working their way through the state legislature that would request the addition from Secretary Gallagher. We'll keep following this one for sure. The Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission is wrapping up their statewide listening tour and held their last public meeting last week on Martha's Vineyard. As the MV Times has it, the meeting was a mostly mellow affair with members of the public giving feedback to Commission member Britt McBride about the proposed plans for the new adult use system set to launch later this year. I think the commission has done as good a job as is possible given the hugely complicated tasks they've been given and should be looked at by other states undergoing the same process. I should mention here in full disclosure that my friend Shaleen Title, who is also an on hiatus regular on our weekly podcast Marijuana Today, is one of the five members of the Massachusetts Cannabis Control Commission. And finally for today, we revisit a theme we've touched on a lot over the past few weeks with Leafly doing a good service to us all by writing up a comprehensive roundup of the various efforts in California to expunge people's past convictions for now legal marijuana crimes. As with just about everything marijuana related in California, the story over past conviction expungement changes from town to town and city to city, which makes Leafly's article all the handier. One last story for today that you should should really open up in full. Those are the headlines and news for the day. I'll be back with the end tomorrow morning with another information packed episode of Marijuana Today Daily. But in the meantime, if you have any stories to share or feedback to give, zip us an email to headlines at mjtodaydaily.com. And while you're clicking around the interwebs, swing over to our Twitter account at mjtodaydaily and visit our website at mjtodaydaily.com to find links to all the news we cover. Thanks to our sponsor, the Emerald Conference, and to all of our awesome patron listeners for the support that makes this show possible. To join the lesser ranks of the patron listeners yourself, swing over to our website at mjtodaydaily.com and click on that big blue button at the top of the page that says, become a patron. I'm your host, Shay Gunther. Thanks for tuning in and starting your day with marijuana today. Today. One take, Shay. One take.